A semi-trailer truck is a large vehicle that consists of a towing engine, known as a tractor in the United States and truck in many other places, attached to one or more semi-trailers to carry freight. It is also known as a transport in Canada. Semi or single in Australia. Semi, tractor trailer, big rig, or 18-wheeler in the United States. Articulated lorry, abbreviated Arctic, in Britain and Ireland. And lorry in Malawi. A semi-trailer does not trail completely behind the towing vehicle, but is attached at a point that is just forward of the rearmost axle of the towing unit. This is done so that a large portion of the weight of the trailer is carried by the prime mover. This arrangement means that both tractor and semi-trailer will have a distinctly different design than a rigid truck and trailer. Regional Configurations, North America In North America, the combination vehicles made up of a powered truck and one or more detachable trailers, are known as semi-tractor trailers, tractor trailers, semis, big rigs, semi-trucks or 18-wheelers. Trucks, the tractors, or powered trucks, typically have two or three axles. Those built for hauling heavy-duty commercial construction machinery may have as many as four or five axles, some often being lift axles. The most common tractor cab layout has a Ford engine, one steering axle, and two drive axles. The fifth-wheel trailer coupling on most tractor trucks is movable fore and aft, to allow adjustment in the weight distribution over its rear axle. S. Ubiquitous in Europe, but less common in North America since the 1990s, is the Kabova configuration, where the driver sits next to, or over the engine. With changes in the U.S. to the maximum length of the combined vehicle, the Kabova was mostly phased out of North American over-the-road or long-haul service by 2007. Kabovas were notorious for being difficult to service, as the cab could not be lifted on its hinges to a full 90-degree forward tilt and this severely limited access to the front part of the engine. Trucks average between 4 and 8 miles per U.S. gallon, with fuel economy standards requiring more than 7 miles per U.S. gallon efficiency by 2014. Trailers The cargo trailer usually has a tandem axle pair at the rear, each of which has dual wheels, or eight wheels on the trailer, four per axle. The combination of eight tires on the trailer and ten tires on the tractor is what led to the moniker 18-wheeler, although this term is considered by some truckers to be a misnomer. Many trailers are equipped with movable tandem axles to allow adjusting the weight distribution. The United States also allows two-axle tractors to pull two single-axle 28.5 AFT semi-trailers, known officially as STAA doubles, and colloquially as doubles, a set, or a set of joints on all highways that are part of the national network. To connect the second of a set of doubles to the first trailer, and to support the front half of the second trailer, a converter gear, also known as a con gear or dolly is used. This apparatus has one or two axles, a fifth wheel coupling for the rear trailer, and a tongue with a ring hitch coupling for the forward trailer. Individual states may further allow longer vehicles, known as longer combination vehicles, or LCVs and may allow them to operate on roads other than those that are part of the national network. LCV types include, triples 328.5 AFT trailers. Maximum weight up to 129,000 LB. Turnpike doubles, 248 AFT trailers. Maximum weight up to 147,000 LB. Rocky Mountain doubles, 140-53 AFT trailer and 128.5 AFT trailer. Maximum weight up to 129,000 lb. In Canada, a turnpike double is 253 LFT trailers, and a Rocky Mountain double is a 50 LFT trailer with a 24 LFT pup. Future LCVs under consideration and study for the USMAP 21 transportation bill are container doubles. These combinations are under study for potential recommendation in November 2014. 40 LFT trailer turnpike doubles. 148,000 LB GVWR, 40 20th feet trailer Rocky Mountain doubles, 134,000 LB GVWR, double 20 FT trailer doubles, 120,000 LB GVWR. Regulations on LCVs vary widely from one state or province to another. None allows more than three trailers without a special permit.
Reasons for limiting the legal trailer configurations include both safety concerns and the impracticality of designing and constructing roads that can accommodate the larger wheelbase of these vehicles and the larger minimum turning radii associated with them. Most states restrict operation of larger tandem trailer setups such as triple units, turnpike doubles and rocky mountain doubles. In general, these configurations are restricted to turnpikes. Except for these units, tandem setups are not restricted to certain roads any more than a single setup. They are also not restricted by weather conditions or difficulty of operation. The Canadian province of Ontario, however, does have weather-related operating restrictions for larger tandem trailer setups. In the United States, 80,000 lb is the maximum allowable legal gross vehicle weight without a permit. The axle weight breakdown is, 20,000 lb maximum on a single axle, 34,000 lb maximum on the tandem axles, over length and overweight permits are issued by each individual state whose roads will be travelled. The permits are usually issued in advance, for a specific period of time, over a specific route, with a specific load. Most over-length loads require one or more escort vehicles. An escort is an accompanying automobile and its driver, who communicates with the driver of the payload vehicle regarding the position of the load in relation to the road and shoulder, and about other situational considerations. A trailer's dimensions can vary greatly, depending on the amount and type of cargo it is designed to haul. In the United States, they are normally limited to 8.5 feet in width. Europe. The noticeable difference between tractor units in the North American and Europe is that almost all European models are cab over engine, while the majority of North American trucks are conventional. For repairs, the entire cab hinges forward to allow maintenance access. European trucks, whether rigid or fully articulated, have a sheer face on the front. This allows for shorter trucks with longer trailers within the legal maximum total length. Furthermore, it offers greater maneuverability and better overview for the driver. Conversely, conventional cab tractors offer the driver a more comfortable driving environment and better protection in a collision as well as eliminating the need to empty the driver's personal effects from the tractor whenever the engine requires service. In Europe usually only the rear tractor axle has twin wheels, while larger size single wheels are used for the cargo trailer. The most common combination used in Europe is a semi-tractor with two axles and a cargo trailer with three axles, giving five axles and twelve wheels in total. Lesser used are tractors with three axles, which feature twin wheels either on one or both rear axles. In addition to the most common three axles variant, cargo trailers with only two or only one axle are in use, again usually with larger single wheels. In Sweden. Lumber and long distance freight is run on seven or eight axle combinations up to 60,000 kg in weight and 25.25 am long. Semi trailers are used for short distance freight. In Finland, since October 1, 2013, law in 407 2013 allows 76 a tons maximum if the truck has nine axles, and 68 a tons maximum if the truck has eight axles. The truck can be 25.25 am long and 4.4 am high in both cases. The forest sector plans to submit to the Finnish Transport Safety Agency an application for testing lorries weighing 90 tons and 30 am long on Finnish roads. United Kingdom In the United Kingdom, the maximum permitted gross weight of a semi-trailer truck, without the use of a special type general order, is 44,000 kg which is the second heaviest permitted legal weight for a single semi-trailer truck in the world is allowed in the Netherlands. In order for a 44-ton semi-trailer truck to be permitted on UK roads the tractor and semi-trailer must have three or more axles each. Lower weight semi-trailer trucks can mean some tractors and trailer having fewer axles. In practice, like double-decker buses and coaches in the UK, there is no legal height limit for semi-trailer trucks. However, bridges over 5.03 am do not have the height marked on them. Semi-trailer trucks on continental Europe have a height limit of 4.0 am. Vehicles heavier than 44,000 kg are permitted on UK roads but are indivisible loads, which would be classed as abnormal. 
Such vehicles are required to display an STGO plate on the front of the tractor unit and, under certain circumstances, are required to travel by an authorized route and have an escort. Most UK trailers are 13.7 am long and, dependent on the position of the fifth wheel and kingpin, a coupled tractor unit and trailer will have a combined length of between 15.25 and 16.75 am. Although the construction and use regulations allow a maximum rigid length of 18.2 am, this, combined with a shallow kingpin and fifth wheel set close to the rear of the tractor unit, can give an overall length of around 22.75 am, although combinations of this length are usually used only to carry steel or concrete beams. Providing certain requirements are fulfilled, a special types general order allows for vehicles of any size or weight to travel on UK roads. However, in practice any such vehicle has to travel by a route authorized by the Department of Transport and move under escort. The escort of abnormal loads in the UK is now predominantly carried out by private companies, but extremely large or heavy loads that require road closures must still be escorted by the police. In the UK, some articulated trucks have eight tires on three axles on the tractor. These are known as six-wheelers or six-leggers, with either the center or rear axle having single wheels which normally steer as well as the front axle and can be raised when not needed. Some trailers have two axles which have twin wheels on each axle. Other trailers have three axles, of which one axle can be a lift axle which is super single wheels. In the UK, two wheels bolted to the same hub are classed as a single wheel, therefore a standard six-axle articulated truck is considered to have 12 wheels, even though it is 20 tires. The UK also allows articulated truck tractors which have six tires on two axles. These are known as four-wheelers. Denby Ecolink B train, in 2009, the operator Denby Transport designed and built a 25.25 meter long B-train semi-trailer truck called the Denby Ecolink to show the benefits of such a vehicle, which were a reduction in road accidents and result in less road deaths, a reduction in emissions due to the one tractor unit still being used and no further highway investment being required. Furthermore, Denby Transport asserted that two Ecolinks would replace three standard articulated lorries while if limited to the current UK weight limit of 44 tonnes, it was claimed the Ecolink would reduce carbon emissions by 16% and could still halve the number of trips needed for the same amount of cargo carried in conventional lorries. This is based on the fact that for light but bulky goods such as toilet paper, plastic bottles, cereals and aluminium cans, conventional lorries run out of cargo space before they reach the weight limit. At 44 tonnes, as opposed to 60 tons usually associated with B trains, the Ecolink also exerts less weight per axle on the road compared to the standard 6 axle 44 ton articulated combination. The vehicle was built after Denby Transport believed they had found a legal loophole in the present UK law to allow the Ecolink to be used on the public roads. The relevant legislation concerned the 1986 Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations. The 1986 regulations state that certain vehicles may be permitted to draw more than one trailer and can be up to 26 am. The point of law reportedly hinged on the definition of a towing implement, with Denby prepared to argue that the second trailer on the Ecolink was one. The Department for Transport were of the opinion that this refers to recovering a vehicle after an accident or breakdown, but the regulation does not explicitly state this. During BTAC performance testing the Ecolink was given an excellent rating for its performance in maneuverability, productivity, safety and emissions tests, superseding ordinary lorries in many respects. Private trials had also reportedly shown the Denby vehicle had a 20% shorter stopping distance than conventional lorries of the same weight, due to having extra axles. The active steer system meant that the Ecolink had a turning circle of 12 am, the same as a conventional articulated lorry. Although the DFT advised that the Ecolink was not permissible on public roads, Denby Transport gave the police prior warning of the timing and route of the test drive on the public highway as well as outlining their position in writing to the Eastern Traffic Area Office. On December 1, 2009 MB Transport were preparing to drive the Ecolink on public roads, 
but this was cut short because the police pulled the lorry over as it left the gates in order to test it for its legality to investigate any offenses which may be found. The police say the vehicle was unlawful due to its length and MB transport was served with a notice by the Vehicle and Operator Services Agency inspector to remove the vehicle from the road for inspection. Having returned to the yard, Denby Transport was formally notified by police and VOSA that the lorry could not be used. Neither the Ecolink, nor any other B-train, have since been permitted on UK roads. However, this prompted the Department for Transport to undertake a desk study into semi-trailer trucks, which has resulted in the longest semi-trailer trial which commenced in 2012. Longest semi-trailers Starting in January 2012 the Department for Transport is conducting a trial of longer semi-trailers. The trial involves 900 semi-trailers of 14.6 am in length longer than the current maximum, and a further 900 semi-trailers of 15.65 am in length longer. This will result in the total maximum length of the semi-trailer truck being 17.5 am for trailers 14.6 am in length and 18.55 am for trailers 15.65 am in length. The increase in length will not result in the 44,000 kg weight limit being exceeded and will allow some operators to approach the weight limit which may not have been previously possible due to the previous length of trailers. The trial will run for a maximum of 10 years. Continental Europe the maximum overall length applying in the EU and EEA member states is 18.75 am with a maximum weight of 40 a tons, or 44 a tons if carrying an ISO container. However, rules limiting the semi-trailers to 16.5 am and 18.75 am are met with trucks carrying a standardized 7.82 am body with one additional 7.82 am body on tow as a trailer. Since 1996, when Sweden and Finland formally won a final exemption from the European Economic Area rules with 60 a ton and 25.25 am combinations, all other member states gained the ability to adopt the same rules. In Italy the maximum permitted weight is 44 a tons for any kind of combination with 5 axles or more. Effort to increase the maximum overall length the 25.25 a meter truck combinations were developed under the branding of ECO Combi which influenced the name of Euro Combi for an ongoing standardization effort where such truck combinations shall be legal to operate in all jurisdictions of the European Economic Area. With the 50% increase in cargo weight, the fuel efficiency increases with an average of 20% with a corresponding relative decrease in carbon emissions and with the added benefit of one-third fewer trucks on the road. The 1996 EU regulation defines a Europe module system as it was implemented in Sweden. The wording of EMS combinations and Euro Combi are now used interchangeably to point to truck combinations as specified in the EU document. However apart from Sweden and Finland the Euro Combi is only allowed to operate on specific tracks in other EU member states. From 2006, 25.25 am truck trailer combinations are to be allowed on restricted routes within Germany, following a similar trial in the Netherlands. Similarly, Denmark have allowed 25.25 am combinations on select routes. Like in Sweden and Finland, these vehicles in continental Europe will run a 60 a ton weight limit. Two types are to be used, one, a 26 a ton truck pulling a dolly and semi-trailer, or two an articulated tractor unit pulling a B-double. The UK government has so far decided not to have its own trial of these 60-a-ton vehicles, but to keep an eye on the other country's trials. When using a dolly, which generally has to be equipped with lights and a license plate, rigid trucks can be used to pull semi-trailers. The dolly is equipped with a fifth wheel to which the trailer is coupled. Because the dolly attaches to a pintle hitch on the truck, Maneuvering a trailer hooked to a dolly is different from maneuvering a fifth-wheel trailer. Backing the vehicle requires same technique as backing an ordinary truck full-trailer combination, though the dolly semi-setup is probably longer, thus requiring more space for maneuvering. The tractor semi-trailer configuration is rarely used on timber trucks, since these will use the two big advantages of having the weight of the load on the drive wheels and the loader crane used to lift the logs from the ground can be mounted on the rear of the truck behind the load.
allowing a short crane to reach both ends of the vehicle without uncoupling. Also construction trucks are more often seen in a rigid plus axle trailer configuration instead of the tractor semi-trailer setup. Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden and Finland. Denmark, the Netherlands and Norway all allowed 25.25 am trucks. In Sweden, the allowed length has been 24 am since 1967. Before that, the maximum length was unlimited. The only limitations were on axle load. What stopped Sweden from adopting the same rules as the rest of Europe, when securing road safety, was the national importance of a competitive forestry industry. Finland, with the same road safety issues and equally important forestry industry, followed suit. The change made trucks able to carry three stacks of cut-to-length logs instead of two, as it would be in a short combination. They have one on stack together with a crane on the 6A, 4 truck, and two additional stacks on a 4 axle trailer. The allowed gross weight in both countries is up to 60 tons depending on the distance between the first and last axle. In the negotiations starting in the late 1980s preceding the two countries' entries to the European Economic Area and later the European Union, they insisted on exemptions from the EU rules citing environmental concerns and the transportation needs of the logging industry. In 1995, after Sweden and Finland's entry to the Union, the rules changed again, this time to allow trucks carrying a standard CEN unit of 7.82 am to draw a 13.6 am standard semi-trailer on a dolly, a total overall length of 25.25 am. Later, B double combinations came into use, often with one 6 a.m. container on the B link and a 12 a.m. container on a semi trailer bed. In allowing the longer truck combinations, what would take two 16.5 a.m. semi trailer trucks and one 18.75 a.m. truck and trailer to haul on the continent now could be handled by just two 25.25 a.m. trucks, greatly reducing overall costs and emissions. Prepared since late 2012 and effective on January 2013, Finland has changed its regulations to allow total maximum legal weight of a combination to be 76 a tons. At the same time the maximum allowed height would be increased by 20 a cm. From current maximum of 4.2 am to 4.4 am. The effect this major maximum weight increase would cause to the roads and bridges in Finland over time is strongly debated. However, longer and heavier combinations are regularly seen on public roads. Special permits are issued for special cargo. The mining company Belyden AB have a standing special permit for 80 a ton combinations on select routes between mines in the inland and the processing plant in Belyden, taking a 50 a ton load of all. Volvo has a special permit for a 32 a.m. Steering B trailer trailer combination carrying two 12 a.m. containers to and from Gothenburg Harbor and the Volvo Trucks factory, all on the island of Hisingen. Another example is the ongoing project Entravetal started in December 2008. It will allow even longer vehicles to further rationalize the logging transports. As the name of the project points out, it will be able to carry four stacks of timber, instead of the usual three. The test is limited to Narrabotten County and the European Route E4 between the timber terminal in Averkalix and the sawmill in Munksund. The vehicle is a 30 a.m. long truck trailer combination with a gross weight exceeding 90 a tons. It is estimated that this will give a 20% lower cost and 20 to 25% CO2 emissions reduction compared to the regular 60 a ton truck combinations. As the combination spreads its weight over more axles, Braking distance, road wear and traffic safety is believed to be either the same or improved with the 90 a ton truck trailer. In the same program two types of 74 a ton combinations will be tested in Dolsland and Bohusla currency and counties in western Sweden, an enhanced truck and trailer combination for use in the forest and AB double for plain highway transportation to the mill in Skoghall. In 2012. The Northland Mining Company received permission for 90 a ton combinations with normal axle load for use on the 150 a km Cornice Valaris Vapavara route, carrying iron ore. Australia Australian road transport has a reputation for using very large trucks and road trains. 
This is reflected in the most popular configurations of trucks generally having dual drive axles and three axles on the trailers, with four tires on each axle. This means that Australian single semi-trailer trucks will usually have 22 wheels, which is generally more than their counterparts in other countries. Long-haul transport usually operates as B-doubles with two trailers, for a total of nine axles. In some lighter-duty applications only one of the rear axles of the truck is driven, and the trailer may have only two axles. From July 2007, the Australian federal and state governments allowed the introduction of B-triple trucks on a specified network of roads. B-triples are set up differently from conventional road trains. The front of their first trailer is supported by the turntable on the prime mover. The second and third trailers are supported by turntables on the trailers in front of them. As a result, B-triples are much more stable than road trains and handle exceptionally well. True road trains only operate in remote areas, regulated by each state or territory government. In total, the maximum length that any articulated vehicle may be is 53.5 am, its maximum load may be up to 164 tons gross, and may have up to four trailers. However, heavy restrictions apply to the areas where such a vehicle may travel in most states. In remote areas such as the Northern Territory great care must be taken when sharing the road with longer articulated vehicles that often travel during the daytime, especially four-trailer road trains. Articulated trucks towing a single trailer or two trailers with maximum overall length of 19 am are referred to as general access heavy vehicles, and are permitted in all areas, including metropolitan. B-doubles are limited to a maximum total weight of 62.5 tons and overall length of 25 am, or 26 am if they are fitted with approved FUPS devices. B-doubles may only operate on designated roads, which includes most highways and some major metropolitan roads. B-doubles are very common in all parts of Australia including state capitals and on major routes they outnumber single trailer configurations. Maximum width of any vehicle is 2.5 am and a height of 4.3 am. In the past few years, allowance has been made by several states to allow certain designs of heavy vehicles up to 4.6 am high but they are also restricted to designated routes. In effect, a 4.6 a meter high B-double will have to follow two sets of rules, they may access only those roads that are permitted for B-doubles and for 4.6 a meter high vehicles. In Australia, both conventional tractor units and cabovers are common, however cabovers are most often seen on B-doubles on the eastern seaboard where the reduction in total length allows the vehicle to pull longer trailers and thus more cargo than it would otherwise. Super single tires are sometimes used on triaxle trailers. The suspension is designed with travel limiting, which will hold the rim off the road for one blown or deflated tire for each side of the trailer, so a trailer can be driven at reduced speed to a safe place for repair. Super singles are also often used on the steer axle in Australia to allow greater loading over the steer axle. The increase in loading of steer tires requires a permit. Semi truck manufacturers these are for tractor units, not straight, rigid, box or other heavy vehicles. Currently in the United States and Canada. Currently in Europe. Currently in Japan and some other Asia-Pacific regions, Hino Motors, Nissan Diesel, Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation, Isuzu, Sinatruk, FAW, Photon, Tata Motors. Currently in other countries, Alkawari Industries, Ashok Leyland. Parat Benz, BMC, Volkswagen Trucks and Buses, Volvo Trucks. Construction Types of Trailers There are many types of semi-trailers in use, designed to haul a wide range of products. Box Truck, Bus, Refrigerator Truck, Tanker, Dry Bulk, Flatbed Truck, Lowboy, Car Hauler, Coupling and Uncoupling, the Cargo Trailer is, by means of a king pin, hooked to a horseshoe-shaped quick-release coupling device called a fifth wheel or a turntable hitch at the rear of the towing engine that allows easy hookup and release. The truck trailer cannot move by itself because it only has wheels at the rear end, it requires a forward axle, provided by the towing engine, to carry half the load weight. When braking hard at high speeds, the vehicle has a tendency to fold at the pivot point between the towing vehicle and the trailer. 
Such a truck accident is called a trailer swing, although it is also commonly described as a jackknife. Jackknifing is a condition where the tractive unit swings round against the trailer, and not vice versa. Braking Semi trucks use air pressure, rather than hydraulic fluid, to actuate the brakes mainly due to the much larger braking forces required. The use of air hoses allows for ease of coupling and uncoupling of trailers from the tractor unit, as well as reducing the potential for problems common to hydraulic systems, such as leakage or brake failure caused when overheated brake fluid vaporizes in the hydraulic lines. The most common failure is brake fade, usually caused when the drums or discs in the linings of the brakes overheat from excessive use. The parking brake of the tractor unit and the emergency brake of the trailer are spring brakes that require air pressure in order to be released. They are applied when air pressure is released from the system, and disengaged when air pressure is supplied. This is a fail-safe design feature which ensures that if air pressure to either unit is lost, the vehicle will stop to a grinding halt, instead of continuing without brakes and becoming uncontrollable. The trailer controls are coupled to the tractor through two glad hand connectors, which provide air pressure, and an electrical cable, which provides power to the lights and any specialized features of the trailer. Glad hand connectors are air hose connectors, each of which has a flat engaging face and retaining tabs. The faces are placed together, and the units are rotated so that the tabs engage each other to hold the connectors together. This arrangement provides a secure connection, but allows the couplers to break away without damaging the equipment if they are pulled, as may happen when the tractor and trailer are separated without first uncoupling the airlines. These connectors are similar in design to the ones used for a similar purpose between railroad cars. Two airlines typically connect to the trailer unit. An emergency or main air supply line pressurizes the trailer's air tank and disengages the emergency brake, and a second service line controls the brake application during normal operation. In the UK, male-female quick-release connectors have a female on the truck and male on the trailer but a yellow line or service is a male on the truck and female on the trailer. This avoids coupling errors plus the connections will not come apart if pulled by accident. The three electrical lines will fit one way around a primary black, a secondary green, and an ABS lead, all of which are collectively known as Susie's or Susie coils. Another braking feature of semi-trucks is engine braking, which could be either a compression brake or exhaust brake or combination of both. However, the use of compression brake alone produces a loud and distinctive noise, and to control noise pollution, some local municipalities have prohibited or restricted the use of engine brake systems inside their jurisdictions, particularly in residential areas. The advantage to using engine braking instead of conventional brakes is that a truck can descend a long grade without overheating its wheel brakes. Some vehicles can also be equipped with hydraulic or electric retarders which have an advantage of near-silent operation. Transmission Because of the wide variety of loads the semi may carry, they usually have a manual transmission to allow the driver to have as much control as possible. However, all truck manufacturers now offer semi-automatic transmissions, as well as automatic transmissions. Semi-truck transmissions can have as few as 3 forward speeds or as many as 18 forward speeds. A large number of transmission ratios means the driver can operate the engine more efficiently. Modern on-highway diesel engines are designed to provide maximum torque in a narrower PM range. Having more gear ratios means the driver can hold the engine in its optimum range regardless of road speed. A 10-speed manual transmission for example is controlled via a six-slot H-box pattern, similar to that in five-speed cars a Euro 5 Ford and one reverse gear. Gears 6 to 10 are accessed by a low high-range splitter. Gears 1 to 5 are low range. Gears 6 to 10 are high range using the same shift pattern. A Super 10 transmission, by contrast, has no range splitter. It uses alternating stick and button shifting. The 13, 15, and 18 speed transmissions have the same basic shift pattern, but include a splitter button to enable additional ratios found in each range. Some transmissions may have 12 speeds. Another difference between semi trucks and cars is the way the clutch is set up. On an automobile, 
the clutch pedal is depressed full stroke to the floor for every gear shift, to ensure the gearbox is disengaged from the engine. On a semi-truck with constant mesh transmission, such as by the Eaton Rod Ranger series, not only is double clutching required, but a clutch brake is required as well. The clutch brake stops the rotation of the gears, and allows the truck to be put into gear without grinding when stationary. The clutch is pressed to the floor only to allow smooth engagement of low gears when starting from a full stop. When the truck is moving, the clutch pedal is pressed only far enough to brake torque for gear changes. Lights An electrical connection is made between the tractor and the trailer through a cable often referred to as a pigtail. This cable is a bundle of wires in a single casing. Each wire controls one of the electrical circuits on the trailer, such as running lights, brake lights, turn signals, etc. A straight cable would break when the rig went around corners, so a coiled cable is used which retracts these coils when not under tension. It is these coils that cause the cable to look like a pigtail. In most countries a trailer or semi-trailer must have minimum, two rear lights, two stop lights, two turning lights. One for right and one for left, flashing, two marking lights behind if wider than certain specifications, two marking lights front if wider than the truck or wider than certain specifications, wheels and tires, although dual wheels are the most common, use of two single, wider tires, known as super singles, on each axle is becoming popular among bulk cargo carriers and other weight sensitive operators. With increased efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the use of the super single tire is gaining popularity. There are several advantages to this configuration. The first of these is that super singles reduce fuel consumption. In 1999, tests on a Noval track showed a 10% fuel savings when super singles were used. These savings are realized because less energy is wasted flexing fewer tire side walls. Second, the lighter overall tire weight allows a truck to be loaded with more freight. The third advantage is that the single wheel encloses less of the brake unit, which allows faster cooling and reduces brake fade. One of the major disadvantages of the super singles is that they are currently not as widely available as a standard tire. In addition, if a tire should become deflated or be destroyed, there is not another tire attached to the same hub to maintain the dynamic stability of the vehicle, as would be the case with dual wheels. With dual wheels, the remaining tire may be overloaded, but it will typically allow the vehicle to be safely stopped or driven to a repair facility. Skirted trailers, an innovation rapidly growing in popularity is the skirted trailer. The space between the road and the bottom of the trailer frame was traditionally left open, until it was realized that the turbulent air swirling under the trailer is a major source of aerodynamic drag. Three split skirt concepts were verified by the United States Environmental Protection Agency to provide fuel savings greater than 5%, and four split skirt concepts had EPA verified fuel savings between 4 and 5%. The drawback to skirts is that they make the trailers more vulnerable to high crosswind forces, and therefore more susceptible to doglegging, or rolling over in a crosswind situation. Another drawback is that skirted trailers require more steps to remove wheels after a tire blowout. Skirted trailers are often combined with underrun protection systems, greatly improving safety for passenger vehicles sharing the road. Underride guard. Technically called a rear underrun protection system, this is a rigid assembly hanging down from the bottom rear of the trailer, which is intended to provide some protection for passenger cars which collide with the rear of the trailer. Public awareness of this safeguard was increased in the aftermath of the accident that killed actress Jane Mansfield on June 29, 1967, when the car she was in hit the rear of a tractor trailer, causing fatal head trauma. After her grisly death, the NHTSA recommended requiring a rear underride guard, also known as a Mansfield bar, or an ICC bar, but the trucking industry has been slow to upgrade this safety feature. The bottom rear of the trailer is near head level for an adult seated in a car, and without the underride guard, the only protection for such an adult's head in a rear end collision would be the car's windshield. Because of the height mismatch between a passenger car bumper and the much higher height of the platform of a trailer, the car's protective crush zone becomes irrelevant and airbags are ineffective in protecting the car passengers, 
if the underride guard is missing or inadequate. In addition to rear underride guards, truck tractor cabs may be equipped with a front underrun protection system at the front of the truck consist. The safest tractor trailers are also equipped with side underride guards, also called side underrun protection system. These additional barriers prevent passenger cars from skidding underneath the trailer from the side, such as in an oblique or side collision, or if the trailer jack knives across the road. In addition to safety benefits, these underride guards may improve fuel mileage by reducing air turbulence under the trailer at highway speeds. Another benefit of having a sturdy underride guard is that it may be secured to a loading dock with a hook to prevent trailer creep, a movement of the trailer away from the dock, which opens up a dangerous gap during loading or unloading operations. Driver's License A special driver's license is required to operate various commercial vehicles. Canada Regulations vary by province. A license to operate a vehicle with air brakes is required. In Ontario, a Z endorsement is required to drive any vehicle using air brakes. In provinces other than Ontario, the A endorsement is for air brake operation only, and an S endorsement is for both operation and adjustment of air brakes. Anyone holding a valid Ontario driver's license with a Z endorsement can legally drive any air brake equipped truck trailer combination with a registered or actual gross vehicle weight up to 11 a tons, that includes one trailer weighing no more than 4.6 a tons if the license falls under the following three classes, Class E, F or G, A Class B, C, or D license enables its holder to drive any truck trailer combination with a registered or actual gross vehicle weight greater than 11 a tons, that includes one trailer weighing no more than 4.6 a tons. Anyone holding an Ontario Class A license can drive any truck trailer combination with a registered or actual gross vehicle weight greater than 11 a tons, that includes one or more trailers weighing more than 4.6 a tons. United States Drivers of semi-trailer trucks generally require a Class A commercial driver's license to operate any combination vehicles with a combined gross vehicle weight rating in excess of 26,000 lb if the gross vehicle weight rating of the towed vehicle, S, is in excess of 10,000 lb. Some states provide exemptions for farmers, allowing non-commercial license holders to operate semis within a certain air mile radius of their reporting location. State exemptions however, are only applicable in interstate commerce. Stipulations of the Code of Federal Regulations may be applied in interstate commerce. Also a person under the age of 21 cannot operate a commercial vehicle outside the state where the commercial license was issued. This restriction may also be mirrored by certain states in their interstate regulations. A person must be at least 18 in order to be issued a commercial license. In addition, Endorsements are necessary for certain cargo and vehicle arrangements and types. H. Hazardous materials, necessary if materials require HM placards. N. Tankers, the driver is acquainted with the unique handling characteristics of liquids tankers. X. Signifies hazardous materials and tanker endorsements, combined. T. Doubles and triples, the licensee may pull more than one trailer. P. Buses, any vehicle designed to transport 16 or more passengers. S. School buses, any school bus designed to transport 11 or more passengers. W. Tow truck, Taiwan. The road traffic security rules require a combination vehicle driver license to drive a combination vehicle. These rules define a combination vehicle as a motor vehicle towing a heavy trailer, that is, a trailer with a gross weight of more than 750 kilograms. Europe, A Category C E driving license is required to drive a tractor trailer. Category C is required for vehicles over 7,500 kg, while Category E is for heavy trailers, which in the case of trucks and buses means any trailer over 750 kg. Vehicles over 3,500 kg Euro, which is the maximum limit of B licensee Euro, but under 7,500 kg can be driven with a C1 license. Buses require a D license. A bus that is registered for no more than 16 passengers, excluding the driver, can be driven with a D1 license. Australia, 
truck drivers in Australia require an endorsed license. These endorsements are gained through training and experience. The minimum age to hold an endorsed license is 18 a years, and or must have held open driver's license for minimum 12 a months. The following are the heavy vehicle license classes in Australia, LR. Class LR covers a rigid vehicle with a GVM of more than 4.5 a tons but not more than 8 a tons. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 a tons GVM. Also includes vehicles with a GVM up to 8 a tons which carry more than 12 adults including the driver and vehicles in Class C, Mr. Class Mr. covers a rigid vehicle with two axles and a GVM of more than 8 a tons. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 a tons GVM. Also includes vehicles in Class LR, HR, Class HR covers a rigid vehicle with three or more axles and a GVM of more than 15 a tons. Any towed trailer must not weigh more than 9 a tons GVM. Also includes articulated buses and vehicles in Class Mr. HC, Class HC covers heavy combination vehicles like a prime mover towing a semi-trailer, all rigid vehicles towing a trailer with a GVM of more than 9 a tons. Also includes vehicles in Class HR, MC. Class MC covers multi combination vehicles like road trains and B double vehicles. Also includes vehicles in Class HC. In order to obtain an HC license, the driver must have held an Mr. or HR license for at least 12 months. To upgrade to an MC license, the driver must have held a HR or HC license for at least 12 months. From licenses Mr. and upward there is also a B condition which may apply to the license if testing in a synchromesh or automatic transmission vehicle. The B condition may be removed upon the driver proving the ability to drive a constant mesh transmission using the clutch. Constant mesh transmission refers to crash box transmissions, predominantly Road Ranger 18 speed transmissions in Australia. New Zealand in New Zealand drivers of heavy vehicles require specific licenses, termed as classes. A Class 1 license will allow the driving of any vehicle with gross laden weight or gross combination weight of 4,500 kg or less. For other types of vehicles the classes are separately licensed as follows. Class 2, Medium Rigid Vehicle, any rigid vehicle with GLW 18,001 a kg or less with light trailer of 3,500 a kg or less, any combination vehicle with GCW 12,001 a kg or less, any rigid vehicle of any weight with no more than two axles, or any Class 1 vehicle. Class 3, Medium Combination Vehicle, any combination vehicle of GCW 25,001 a kg or less, or any Class 2 vehicle. Class 4, Heavy Rigid Vehicle, any rigid vehicle of any weight, any combination vehicle which consists of a heavy vehicle and a light trailer, or any vehicle of Class 1 or 2. Class 5, Heavy Combination Vehicle, any combination vehicle of any weight, and any vehicle covered by previous classes. Class 6, Motorcycle. Further information on the New Zealand licensing system for heavy vehicles can be found at Land Transport New Zealand. Roll and Trade Modern day semi trailer trucks often operate as a part of a domestic or international transport infrastructure to support containerized cargo shipment. Various types of rail flatbed train cars are modified to hold the cargo trailer or container with wheels or without. This is called intermodal or piggyback. The system allows the cargo to switch from highway to railway or vice versa with relative ease by using gantry cranes. The large trailers pulled by a tractor unit come in many styles, lengths, and shapes. Some common types are vans, reefers, flatbeds, sidelifts, and tankers. These trailers may be refrigerated, heated, ventilated, or pressurized, depending on climate and cargo. Some trailers have movable wheel axles that can be adjusted by moving them on a track underneath the trailer body and securing them in place with large pins. The purpose of this is to help adjust weight distribution over the various axles, to comply with local laws. Media Television NBC ran two popular TV series about truck drivers in the 1970s featuring actor Claude Kins in major roles, 1960s TV series Cannonball, Moving On, BJ and the Bear. Knight Rider, 
an American television show featured a semi-trailer truck called The Semi, operated by the Foundation for Law and Government as a mobile support facility for Kit. Also, in two episodes Kit faced off against an armored semi called Goliath. The Transformers, a 1980s cartoon featuring tractor trailers as the Autobots' leader Optimus Prime, their second-in-command Ultra Magnus, and as the Stunticons' leader Motor Master. Optimus Prime returned in the 2007 film. Trick My Truck, a CMT show features trucks getting tricked out. Ice Road Truckers, a History Channel show charts two months in the lives of six drivers who haul supplies to diamond mines and oil fields over frozen lakes that double as roads. 18 Wheels of Justice, featuring federal agent Michael Katz as a crown witness for the mafia who goes undercover, when forced into it, to fight crime. Eddie Stobart, Trucks and Trailers, a UK television show showing the trucking company Eddie Stobart and its drivers. Films, Duel, Steven Spielberg's 1971 film, features a Peterbilt 281 tanker truck from Australia as the villain, Maximum Overdrive, Stephen King's 1986 film, featured Big Riggs as its primary homicidal villains, Smokey and the Bandit, a 1977 film featuring a number of trucks on the side of the bandit, Convoy, a 1978 film directed by Sam Peckinpah, starring Chris Christopherson, Black Dog, a 1998 film directed by Kevin Hooks, starring Patrick Swayze, Joyride, a 2001 film directed by John Dahl, starring Paul Walker and Steve Zahn, Big Rig, a 2008 documentary film directed by Doug Prey, Music. Convoy, a pop song by C.W. McCall, spurred sales of CB radios with an imaginary trucking story. The 18-wheeled truck was immortalized in numerous country music songs, such as the Red Sovine titles Gid Yup Go, Teddy Bear, and Phantom 309, and Dave Dudley's Six Days on the Road. The thrash metal band, Big Rig, was named after these trucks. Country's song 18 Wheels and a Dozen Roses, made popular in 1987 by singer-songwriter Kathy Mattia. Roll On by Alabama tells the story of a trucker who calls home to his family every night while out on the road. Papa Loved Mama by Garth Brooks is about a trucker and his wife. Truck Driving Song by Weird Al Yankovic tells the story of a female trucker, sung by a male with a deep voice. Video Games See also Notes References External links, trucknetuk.com, dedicated to trucking information in UK and Europe, All Blue, USA, safety and education in and around big trucks in the US as well as in Ask the Law section also in print and on radio where questions can be directed to commercial law enforcement.